Foot Clan, despite my yellow appearance today, we have a great <laughs> show for you. Um, we It's a really fun show. We're going to answer some uh, Ask Us Anything questions, but we also dive pretty deep on a lot of very important players for championship week. If you're looking at Joe Burrow, if you're looking at Kyler Murray, Devin Singletary, Shot Penny, there are a lot of players out there that you might be deciding about or your opponent has and you want to know what you should expect Stay tuned. Enjoy the show. Make sure you like, subscribe, and let's get that championship. We're so close. Let's go! Foot Clan, in the wise words of the great philosopher Jason Moore, champ gonna champ. Champ gonna champ. <laughs> champ gonna champ. And when you pull down that championship, you got to let the people know. And the best way is over at fantasychamps.com. They have a special going on right now where you can help out your league and you help out yourself. You buy your you buy that league a trophy. That thing can, you know, the trophy can get passed around, but you want something special for yourself. How about a ring? How about I tell you that ring is free with the purchase of the trophy as long as you use the promo code free ring. That is correct. Whatever you want. Trophies, incredible rings. Go check it out. Fantasychamps.com. Put the trophy in the cart, then add the ring and use that promo code free ring. And that $59 cost is gone. Oh, blah, blah. Fantasychamps.com. Promo code free ring. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. One and all. <laughs> oh, welcome into the show. The fantasy footballers back with you for Wednesday, December 29th. And if protocols go according to plan, uh, I'll be back in studio tomorrow with these fine gentlemen and we can prep you up for championship. Not if I can help it. Yeah, I know. You'll you'll keep me out. That's right. Uh, he just wants to do what's best for the show, Andy. Uh, you can't, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> people have been talking about my button pressing mm. over the last couple of days, saying is these these buttons have never been pressed. It's incredible work, <laughs> like like this, like this before. before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got some mailbag today, news to talk about. There's always the uh, this year. There's the ever shifting injury protocol landscape we need to talk about and. I mean, this is your opportunity to do everything you can do to secure that Foot Clan title, to bring it home, and no Thursday night football this week. You've got Sunday night games. you got a Monday night game, but this is all going down Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. We've got all the matchups on tomorrow's episode. Mm -hmm. And look, some, some podcasts, look, they, they're, they're real buttoned up. Right, I mean, you you keep it real uh, professional, yeah. And then other ones are just like ours are just transparent with whatever's going on. And oh, we are the buttons are down, chest hair is just spilling out. Unless you manscape, and then in case you do, you don't have anything. Of spilling. course, of course, right. right. I mean, there's uh, a reason I sit at the back <laughs> of the table. Um, I've got no pants on right now for this show. But, Jason so, is actually not nearly as uh, uh thick as he look that is all body hair yes. yeah he's, he's been adding <laughs> just uh, a lot a lot really um everywhere no but but what i was leading into is that you know we we don't really put up a front you know this is a an informal fun show and and so we talk about things like the fact that jason's center light mm. on our studio <laughs> yes is my going out my jaundice and, and the light is going out and the way it's going out it is that it has gone from a very neutral illumination like look at mike on the camera he oh, looks beautiful. very like a normal like skin a normal tone. person mm -hmm. now Handsome. jason jason however and if you want to go to youtube.com uh, slash the fantasy footballers you can see a man who is ill he is I not mean, well <laughs> Where's my IV bag? Uh, this light makes me certainly look like either I have a horrible uh, paint on tan or I have a serious medical issue. You do. Now I'm, you do. Now, I'm not sure, though, what the problem is 
with the lighting at your house, Andy, because you are a vampire. So. I, it's, we have three three completely different colored hosts today. I'm vampire. Mike uh, is in the normal hue, and then Jason is very ill. Looking good, Mike. And, <laughs> Thank and you. Um, all of this, none of this Al would want us to ever speak of on the air as he tries to secure a new light for us. What is what is the ETA on, on healing Jason here? Uh, probably early next week. <laughs> okay, so we've got more Jaundice yeah. Jason. Jaundice Championship. Uh, hashtag Jaundice Jason. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag Jaundice Jason. <laughs> All right. Hey, here's the quick question. Let's get into it. We've got some buy-sell to talk about too, but quick question from Instagram. It's a good one. How do you guys start off-season research? So, um, Oh, brother. One in, one in 12, one in 10 win the league. The rest of you out there, if you got, got close... Um, you, you might be turning your attention to 2022. You might be, you know, we're a year round show. We're here to get you prepped up and there's a lot to learn here at the end of the season. But Jason, let's start with you. How do you start the off season research part of fantasy? So, you know, mine, I think would be uh, different than the, the, the fantasy player. For me, I know that there are a couple of things always that the, the that through the year have been nagging me have been kind of like oh I just wonder about this topic and so it's it's really a nice time before I start scouting rookies to um go deep dive after a couple um inquisitive issues you know uh I've been wondering about you know quarterbacks match with wide receivers or running back you know and then and then do kind of some deep studies and the nice thing is literally right now as we're recording um, Kyle, the Borgogan, our editor in chief is driving to Arizona from Atlanta, uh, and our research machine over here, uh, will be stronger than ever. So, um, yeah, I, I tend to start the off season doing some like, uh, deep dive stuff. I don't have time for in the season and see if we can gain an edge on certain topics. Mike, do you have anything that you yes, want to yeah. jump in there with? Yeah. Uh, despite... Uh, I mean, always never not working. Uh, but I start the off season with a real big nap mm. Uh, mm. After, after the marathon of the regular season. But it's uh, after the you like you know I've had enough of these players. On honestly, I've, we've had a, a full football season, and this is when I start looking forward to the 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 new incoming players. I I get excited for the rookies. Start watching the tape, getting uh, myself familiar with the players because. During the season, we're NFL. You know, people ask, "Oh, do you watch college?" Really, not that much. I'll I'll flip on the uh, uh, the bowl games, the playoffs, and the championship to see the really high level competition and, and enjoy that. But other than that, I'm not plugged in yet to the upcoming rookie class. So uh, that's where my brain it goes and my attention goes for that, and you know, building out the the dynasty pass mm -hmm. and uh, speaking of never not working tomorrow's episode we're going to actually be looking at some people to keep your eye on for next year so mm -hmm. whether you're in whether you're just w wanting to keep an eye on people or you're in a dynasty league or a keeper league uh, I think you'll really enjoy tomorrow's segment we also have the truth shows that start up right as the season ends so we take a look at every position and all the players and the fantasy finishes and try to break down the reality of the seasons for these players as you move forward because you know a lot of, a lot of these guys every one of them has a narrative that they came into the season with and some of them fulfilled the expectations some of them surpassed them some of them fell quite short and and you're going to be thinking about these players not just in the context of you know where would you draft them if draft started tomorrow but how do the teams view them what are they going to do in their draft you know we we see the NFL draft and free agency have a huge impact on the long-term value of players. So if you're in a keeper or dynasty league, you know, you saw the, the whole ping pong effect of Travis Etienne and mm -hmm. James Robinson and these players in the off season where um, things change quickly. So we are with you every step of the way, getting you ready to go. And you know, the off season has its own flavor and it's a lot of fun. Um, if it's possible to, you know, dress down even more. That happens in the off season. Yeah, speedos on. Only speed, just speedos <laughs> and yellow lights. And um, but let's uh, let's get into some well, bef buy sell. Before we do, Andy, you forgot to remind the people about the party room. It's going on tonight. It's Wednesday. Spotify Green Room. We will be live at three Pacific, six Eastern. Pants optional. <laughs> 
Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Someone throwing a key on there? <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite drop. I couldn't resist. It, was, it seemed like the right time. When he hears the word Speedo, he hits that drop. Brooks is our the speedo guy around around here. Um, buy or sell championship week, a lot on the line. And as everybody out there knows, we'll never get anything wrong. It's impossible to get something wrong when you're predicting the future. But buy or sell, let's let's make our decisions here. Keenan Allen against Denver. Is he a top 15 wide receiver? Oh. Huge disappointment against Houston last week. He's only hit the top 15 mark six of 14 weeks. Austin Eckler should be back. New NFL protocols, which we'll talk about in the news, could mean that Mike Williams is back. So Certainly. that, you know, there's there have been some changes to what the NFL is doing around quarantine and and time away from the team. So there's a lot of players that could get back. I think that's a good thing is my point. I think if the offense is moving, that's better for Keenan Allen. But Denver is a very strong defense. And so I think I have to sell this just based on the statistical uh, trends with Keenan Allen and hitting that number. Yeah, I currently have him just inside of that 15. You know, like, but guys like Lockett and, and Waddle are – just behind him currently uh, you know as we start breaking down the week top 15 is tough but oh the stupid matchup with denver i'm gonna i'm gonna buy it though this is, a, this, it is at home I'm gonna, it's at home i'm gonna buy it i'm buying it for all the people playing keenan allen yeah uh, I, I i like i like that and and as far as advice goes he is my wide receiver 14 i would view him as a top 15 option i think he is safe despite a bad game he doesn't really have a ton of bad games that being said the matchup isn't perfect and to get to that top 15 mark usually you're going to need a touchdown i don't see him having a touchdown so i'm going to i'm going to actually sell it um, but I that does not mean that in championship week I'm benching uh, Keenan Allen. Very, very few people I would bench uh, him for. I'm not going to, you know, put in some – not going to put in Tyler Lockett over right. uh, Keenan Allen, even though Tyler Lockett against Detroit could have a monster game. I want security uh, first with high upside, and, and Keenan has both. But I will sell that he is probably – I'll bet he finishes around – wide receiver 18 this week well let's turn our attention to the Raiders version of Keenan Allen Hunter Renfro buy or sell five receptions against Indianapolis 11 of 14 games this year he's hit that number but only has three catches in each of the past two games you saw Cleveland scheme their defense entirely around stopping Hunter Renfro Denver followed suit so you know Hunter Renfro is kind of the go-to, but you've seen Zay Jones emerge a little bit. You've seen the running game with Josh Jacobs, and there's a chance that the Colts are undermanned in this one yet again and have a different quarterback behind center. Maybe the running game is is something that the, the Raiders can use to win this game. Where are you at with this by sell? It, the, the collapse of targets to Hunter Renfro over the past week, I get, you know, teams are – wising up of well if we're going to stop the Raiders currently we just have to stop Hunter Renfro because that that's all Derek Carr is going to in the passing game but to go from nine targets 10 14 to five and three is just absurd like how uh, and they won uh, both games right yes they, yeah they, they, they went two and oh yeah uh 16 to 14 against Cleveland and 17 so I mean they're not they're, they're not, not scoring a lot no, they're not putting up big points uh, they're just shutting down, you know, quarterback mediocrity, uh, which I guess that could be them again against the Colts. But uh, the five, I got to buy that he can get back to that that five reception mark. That doesn't seem like a, a very high bar here for Hunter Renfro, despite the, the disappointing target volume of the past couple weeks. Yeah, I, I would agree with this. Um, Indy's better against the run, so I don't think they'll be able to game plan. Like you're, like you're saying, it, the last two weeks they've been able to run, score you know, a few points, but play good defense, and I don't think they're going to be able to just implement that same strategy this week. Uh, there's um, you know, the possibility that Darren Waller would be back 
which I think would just say you can no longer double cover Hunter Renfro um, and focus on him. I think the five bar is a is a easy one for him to hit. I will sell it. Zay Jones, nine targets against Cleveland, eight yeah. against Denver, seven the week before, five the week before. Like He's hit that five or more number three straight times. I'm not sure that the team is focused on Renfro getting his as much as those short area targets just being completed. So I will sell it against a Colts team that's probably – like I think this game is going to be – not as many offensive possessions as people want. So I think five is going to be – he could definitely hit it, but I'll, I'll be the difference between the three of us and sell this one. Um, just talked about this before the show when looking at different starter options. Yeah. Cordero Patterson, um, surprise sensation on the year, taking on a Buffalo defense that has been, dare I say, atrocious against running backs. Just – bleeding points against running backs for the last half a season. The bar is set low here. Cordero Patterson is a top 24 running back, which he's been in 10 of 14 games, but had the juicy matchup against Detroit. I remember watching this game, hoping for Cordero to have production. And every time I blinked, a quarter was over. Like this game <laughs> flew by and he was the running back 56 at San Francisco the week before, 31 at Detroit, just 22 that opportunities. A, that was with a touchdown. He was the running back 31, and he got a touchdown. He only had 14 rushing yards on seven carries, so he, he was able to chunk two yards per carry against the Detroit Lions, um, which was an upgrade over his previous week of oh. 1.6 yards per carry. So it has not been good, and on the real – problem here because all season long it's been touchdowns and receptions that have really uh propped up Cordero Patterson and two targets each of the last two weeks not enough to put him over that mark um that being said okay I think the the bar being set at 24 the volume has still been there enough uh you know 21 13 only nine opportunities this last week but that was it was just like Andy was saying that that game that game flew by possessions were sparse and I think against the Buffalo Bills you're going to need to have uh, several drives at the end of the game where he's going to be targeted so I think he will be a top 24 uh running back on the week it's poetic that he was the running back 31 because what needs to be brought up is Cordero Patterson is about to turn 31 years old and it's been an incredible season uh very very pleased for the man to get to get this level of success but is it possible that someone who like he hasn't trained you know kind of his whole life to be that running back to get this amount of wear and tear get these carries to get hit this many times in a game He's been an offensive weapon, a kick returner, a wide receiver. And I think it is possible that his body is just to the point of things are starting to uh, catch up to him and, and take the toll on him. So I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell it. There's, a, there's guys off of the waiver that I would be more confident in playing than, uh, than Cordero Patterson. And that's that sucks because Patterson has been – Patterson has carried people into the into the playoffs and into the championship. Well, not carried you through the playoffs, but he got you to where you are. So it's difficult to pivot at this point. But well, Andy has. I'm going to sell. Andy has the best you know uh, example here. He's he's in the championship. He's got Cordero. What are you doing? How are you viewing Cordero this week? Andy, you've probably done the most <laughs> personal research on this topic. It's brutal because Buffalo has been bleeding points to the yes, running back have. position. But but Cordero's not a traditional running back. I mean, what Damian Harris did last week against Buffalo is not the recipe for a successful day for Cordero. And he feels like the biggest case of, like, you play him because he got you there, and that could still be a mistake for your team. So I think at the beginning of this story, like, the bar of top 24, like, cool, you might buy it. He might get in there. That doesn't mean he helps you win the week. And if you play somebody else that's a top 15, top 12 back over him, you know, maybe it's a Jeff Wilson with Elijah Mitchell out. You know, I, I think maybe it's a Ronald Jones. Like, you can't just award him 
like seniority on your roster at this point. And I think, and you know how much I hate to say this, Mike, but I think you made a really good point. Oh, the, te- oh. the team, the team has come out and said like, which was bewildering in the middle of a playoff race right. but th- for the head coach to come out and say, we're managing snaps for our veterans. Like what? Like you, you're trying to make the playoffs. Like why in the world do you need to manage Cordero Patterson snaps? But that's the mentality. And you know that like Mike Davis is going to get 10 opportunities. So I don't know. I think that there's good reason to pivot if you have an option here. And um, do I think I'm going to have to have the courage to do it. Like if Elijah Mitchell is out, I'm going to play Jeff Wilson over Cordero. Okay. Yeah, there, um, there's three names that come to mind for me that I would play over Cordero. I'm still buying him as a top 24, but uh, Jeff Wilson, um, Ronald Jones for sure, and Elijah Penny – are three guys kind of Elijah out of, Penny? Uh, uh, sorry, Rashad Penny. Um, are three guys, uh, you know, out of nowhere. Um, Daryl Williams. Yeah, I would take Daryl Williams okay. as well over over Cordero. What about uh, flex type of decision? Um, asking for a friend, Devonte Smith at Washington, who's thirtieth against receivers. Um, oh, they man. just <laughs> Washington just gave up fifty <laughs> points to the Dallas yeah. wideouts. I w- and. Um, what would you do there? Personally, I would go Cordero there. Personally, I would play Devonta Smith. Cool, thanks, guys. Really, I'll <laughs> let my I'll let my friend know your your solid advice there, you <laughs> sons of guns. All right, I will officially. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna sell top twenty four. Um, that was buy yourself from pristineauction.com. Use our code Ballers get a ten dollar credit over there. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. No more valuable time to have the breaking news alerts on your phone than what happened this morning because waiver wires are going through, and by the time you hear this, they probably went through. And one player we talked a lot about was Isaiah McKenzie yesterday. Suddenly... Cole Beasley and Gabriel Davis have both been removed from the COVID list. The NFL and the NFLPA agreed to reduce the amount of time that players um, must quarantine from 10 to 5. Those players that have tested positive, which lines up with the new guidance from the CDC, which means a whole new world for teams being able to bring guys back sooner, get them cleared by the medical team, which is a requirement. But Beasley and Gabe Davis are back, which uh, deletes Isaiah McKenzie. Yeah, the, you're going to see a lot of guys here testing positive Monday morning and playing that next week on Sunday. So it's um, this was the case where if Cole Beasley was back, Isaiah McKenzie is is not playable. He's He only goes into that role if Cole Beasley is gone. Cole Beasley's back. So hopefully you saw our tweets about it um, before your waivers went through and adjusted accordingly. Carson Wentz added to the COVID list. He is unvaccinated. And the NFL did come out and say the majority of all positive tests were players that tested due to symptoms. So this isn't a case of like the majority of people being added to the list are just asymptomatic. They're just catching them. We don't know. I mean, unless you guys have heard something new. I haven't heard. uh, It seems more likely that... um, Carson Wentz will not be behind center against the Raiders on Sunday, which means somebody else will have the privilege of handing the ball off to Jonathan Taylor, which will probably be enough for that team, but it gives me no confidence in Michael Pittman. Yeah, the the, the COVID protocols changed kind of just after the news of Carson Wentz's um, uh, positive test came out. So he does have Well, a do chance. we know that he he was added to the list? That's what I I haven't not I've not heard whether he's did close he contact. test positive or was he a close contact? I don't think we have a confirmation on that, but I I do still think that Carson Wentz with the new protocols has a has a decent chance of playing Sunday. I would watch the transactions, right? Like see if they're activating a practice squad quarterback up or signing anybody that'll kind of it's usually the telltale sign. We'll we'll try to pay attention to that. And it, this is just another reminder we had talked about on the waiver show. You need to have options. The the Colts, it's Marlon Mack, now Carson Wentz. There could be more players coming up. And you don't want Friday a report saying Jonathan Taylor has added to the COVID list and you're rolling into your championship week and you you thought you were mm-hmm. good to go. Get Naeem Hines. Like, we hope Taylor's going to play. But you need to be ready just in case that 
situation comes up. According to Tom Pelissero, uh, he is referring to Carson Wentz as one of the players like their linebacker, Darius Leonard, that did test positive okay. for COVID-19. So that is a report from Tom Pelissero. Uh, but you're right. Yeah, you have to be you have to be planning for eventualities here with players that are showing up on this list. Pat Fryermuth did mm. go on Instagram to say he's going to be there Monday night. All oh, the muth is loose. He's back, baby. So Monday night. That's Monday night. I mean, Monday. Yeah, <laughs> uh, championship week. Hopefuls. I mean, unless you get, I need the team to come out and verify this because Muth is not like an auto start every week right. for me. So he could be Luth. It could um, be. You got to get that. That might not be the truth. I mean, you got to get. <laughs> you got to get the clear. You got to hear he has cleared the the protocol before. Sunday's matchups. I, I would imagine we would we we'll know that before having to make those start sit decisions on Sunday. Um, if he is active, uh, you know, usually players coming back off the concussion, I view differently than players coming back off of a hamstring or um, some kind of soft tissue issue. I'm more likely to just view him as I viewed him, you know, when he last played. All right, we will jump into the mailbag momentarily. That was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Grab the app. It's free. Join the Breaking Alerts channel. You'll know about every piece of news when it breaks. It's very useful. And we want to thank today's sponsors. I'm talking about Fight Camp. Boom, boom, pow. Boom, boom, pow. Do you want to make 2022 your best year yet? Well, Fight Camp. Sounds like I do. Yeah, yeah well, I do. Yeah, get a Fight Camp. I, you have a Fight Camp, so I'm not talking to you. Uh, enjoy your Fight Camp. I'm talking to the Foot Clan. Fight Camp brings the best workout in the world right into your home, and it makes it fun. You can learn to box. You can learn to kickbox with access to world-class programming, elite trainers, premium equipment, smart technology that turns your workout into an interactive experience. There are thousands of classes and quick workouts. You can get an awesome full-body workout in 20 minutes. Um, they have all sorts of different paths, whether you want to train to be a boxer, you're just there for exercise. It is awesome. And their technology is great. Like the trackers, you can compete with yourself. What did you do on your last time you took this class? And you look at your, your punch strength, your, you know, punches per minute, all that type of cool stuff. I've been using it. I absolutely love it. And it's a quality, like the actual punching bag is a quality piece of equipment now is the best time to get your fight camp take advantage of the holiday deal going on now if you purchase this month you'll get an additional pair of gloves for free just go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers to get an additional pair of gloves for free go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers as joinfightcamp.com slash footballers foot clan do you ever feel like you're being followed around on the internet you know, my man Rockwell, he put that song out, Somebody's Watching Me. Back, I mean, like he didn't even know about the internet yet. That's your man? Oh, you you know he's my man. <laughs> you don't get down with that song? I mean, I don't know. Oh, it's a great song. I don't know I him personally, know but I just I, I, I connect <laughs> with it because I feel like somebody's watching me on the internet, and I don't want that happening. And that's where IP Vanish, they come in. They, they, uh, they provide you with a VPN, a virtual private network, and that makes sure that... The advertisers, they're not learning the ins and the outs about what you are doing on the internet because that is your information, that is your data. They do not need it. You can use a VPN on a computer, tablet, a phone, even things like a Fire Stick if you're streaming media. The VPN has you covered, and they encrypt all of your data. And for listeners of this show, IP Vanish is offering an incredible 65% off their annual plan that's equal to six months for free. It's super easy to use. You just you turn it on with the click of a button, and then it runs seamlessly in the background, and you are protected while you are browsing the web. And, and in case you do have a problem, don't worry about it. IP Vanish 24-7 support available by email, chat, and telephone. Go to ipvanish.com slash footballers to claim that 65% savings. Their annual plan is just $44.99 for the first year with this exclusive discount. This is the time to sign up with the discount and their current promotion. You can get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering. IP Vanish is the best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot, and that's with more than 6,000 reviews. Remember, ipvanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. 
mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's watching me. There you go. Um, I, I'm I'm sitting here. We're getting into the mailbag. If you have a question, you go to the website. Click the submit a question button. You can also dial the voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB. But I'm over on Twitter, and I'm, I'm in the trending, okay? All right. And I'm seeing something very interesting. It says, are shaved heads going to be the look of 2022? Oh, I've seen that, yeah. So I'm, I'm just wondering, Jason, is this a ret- are you going to return? Maybe, maybe. If I get in shape, that's when I could shave my head. So, so Wait, probably not. <laughs> uh, probably Wait, not. What do you mean if you get in shape, you can shave your head? Well, I think that's a good look. I think if you're, you know, when you work out, Are you, you got worried the beard about and the, the shaved thumb? head. Are you, is this a thumb concern? Oh, gosh, I'm not shaving the beard. Um, oh, okay. I, I like the shaved head and the beard look. Yeah, that's a little... Uh, but not like fat. <laughs> I don't want to be fat <laughs> with a shaved head. Yeah, you got you to, gotta, you know... Get the God of War exactly. look going on. Yeah, no, that's good. I mean, that's what uh, Papa Josh is doing right now. Yeah, and, Br- and Brooksy. Yeah, yeah. Brooksy, Brooksy's got it going on. Day, Brooks, have you ever grown out like a big old beard? Nah, not really. Twenty twenty two, man. Yeah, it's your time to shine. Try it on for size. Maybe if you want a title, celebratory beard. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Hey, why don't we jump into a voicemail question here? Maybe. Hey, ballers. This is Zach from Colorado. I made it to the fantasy championship with Kyler Murray as my quarterback. He's had a few rocky weeks lately. I was able to drop it like a tot and pick up Joe Burrow when another team dropped him last week before his monster game. Should I stick with Kyler Murray in the championship or should I pivot to Joe Burrow? Thanks, ballers. What a great articulate question. Yeah, this is a this is a fun question. This is a terrible question. Uh, because Jason and I, we co-manage uh, Dynasty Squad, and we are making this literal exact same decision. You guys have Burrow? We have Burrow. We have Kyler. And we were... You said yesterday you didn't believe in Joe I, this week. Yeah. The, J- Joe Burrow is taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. And what if, if we you, don't believe in either of them? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's kind of the issue here. I tweeted that out that like fair. Kyler Murray is to me the most difficult decision. He's a big name. He's an explosive athlete. He can be one of those quarterbacks that puts up the number one points on the week. But this is a bad matchup. He's playing like crap. He doesn't have Hopkins. Let me let me help you out. Oh, and please. then you got on on the other side. You've got uh, here's the fantasy points given up to the quarterback position for Kansas City since week six. Ten points. Twenty points. Seventeen. Twelve. 19, 4, 14, 11, 24 to Justin Herbert, and 10 last week. And the 24 so, was without Chris Jones. Yep, you are correct. Yep. So you've got a – now in the beginning of the year, you know, the first five weeks, they were atrocious, but can't really pay attention to that anymore. And as a defense overall, top five uh, with Chris Jones, three, four, one, five. Mm-hmm. So there's your case against Joe Burrow. Well, and I said yesterday, when push came to shove, I'm willing to stick with Joe Burrow. But I did, you know, Kyler versus. The, I mean, both teams are at home, right? Yeah, Cincinnati. The, no, no, no. Uh, I believe Arizona's on the road. I believe they are in Dallas. You can bet me on that one. I will double check. Uh, that. But let me add to what Correct. you just on the road. What you just said, Andy, and this is. Personally, I had made the decision to go Kyler, and it's, it's it's what you just read. that That's Kansas City Chiefs, what they've given up combined with. Here is what Joe Burrow has done. Fantasy points scored in six-point uh, format. Um, 46.1 points this last week. Yeah, Incredible. that was nice. 14.8, 26, okay. 18, 18, 11, 7. These are not weak-winning performances. They are... For the most part, bad. Um, 18 is like, okay, my other players can hopefully uh, account for it. You had the 126-point week. The reality is, Mike, you you called Joe Burrow as your start of the week last week. Why? Because of the matchup against the Baltimore Ravens, which to put in some context of Joe Burrow's numbers, currently sitting on about 4,100 yards, 30 passing touchdowns. Seven of those t- passing touchdowns are against the Baltimore Ravens. Almost a thousand of his passing yards are against the Baltimore Ravens. I, like two games, 
perfect matchup for, for Joe Burrow and those weapons. Now, the question to me is, was that such a performance this past week that the team makes that more of the formula where, I mean, they put up 41 against Baltimore, but they put up 15 points against Denver. Like they had in the middle of the season, the Cincinnati Bengals had completely morphed into a run first team. That's what they wanted to be. Joe Mixon was getting just 20 plus opportunities every single week. The offense goes through Joe Mixon. Then you have this performance. I, does it shift things seismically? I'm not exactly sure. But I am terrified of this matchup against the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't not that I love Kyler going against the Dallas Cowboys, but Here's, I'm going with Kyler in this question. I will go with Kyler as well. And Dallas has been on fire, but when you look at the last four matchups for Dallas, the opposing quarterbacks, Washington, the Giants, Washington, the Saints. So Gross. you know, you did have Derek Carr put up 27 and a half fantasy points against the Dallas defense. So Arizona is up against it. I know that they don't have Hopkins, but doesn't it seem like the floor is just much higher for Kyler in this game than it is for Joe Burrow? It does to me. Yeah, the 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 floor for Joe Burrow is is much lower. I we brought this up about the fact that um they probably like most teams seem to do when they play against the Chiefs, they want to run the ball. They want to keep the time of possession. They want to keep it out of, uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes' hands. The last five games before this Baltimore game, Joe Burrow averaged 29.8 passing attempts per game, sub 30. And then he threw 46 times against Baltimore, you know, and, and so it's it's tough. It, like I said, both are bad because I'm looking at Kyler and it's Dallas. It's bad, bad. It's bad, it's bad. bad, bad. I mean, would you go Trey Lance if that was an option? Like, it's not for us. I no. I am playing Trey Lance over Joe Burrow. But what about Kyler? I think I'd still roll with Kyler. Okay. Um here's a I wanted to mix in some AMA questions to the mailbag today too. This one came in from Twitter. CJ Garcia sent it in. It's very timely. We had the uh news yesterday of the sudden passing of legend John Madden yeah. at eighty five. Um the documentary that just came out on Christmas Day. And then he passes a few days later, but they, he wanted to know who the very best at Madden the game is from our ballers crew. Uh, I'm going to guess it's me, uh, mostly because I'm the one who plays probably the most. Uh, I think it's you. I think it's you. There, was, there mean, was a time where I was very, very good at, at Madden where just I would go online. And this is like the Minnesota Vikings, Adrian Peterson years. Uh, I'd run a full house package and just they like, and then just change the direction I'm gonna run, and you couldn't stop it. And uh, but I it I'm glad this question's up because just wanted to you know pay the homage to John Madden. I didn't grow up as a sports kid. That was not I was a video games guy. So my foot into football was John Madden football, and I would play that uh with my friends. I'd play with my with my dad. And that's where I learned the game. That's where I like got you know learned the players, get the passion for the game, and then start really watching and paying attention. And I maybe I maybe it's just anecdotal to me, or and I don't maybe it's just hyperbolic, but I think that the impact that John Madden had on football is he is the he is the largest influencer of all time. For the NFL, not just his, the coaching stuff and everything he did on the field, but uh, I watched uh, I was watching a, a video game documentary on Netflix, and they talked about the emergence of Madden and how EA went out. They sought out John Madden, and Madden was the one like helping to push them to to test the limits of technology. Where EA want, he wanted it realistic. Yes, he wanted, he wanted realistic, it to be realistic. And EA was like, "Well, it's this is going to be real tough, man. What if we do like a seven on seven? And Madden said, "No, no, football is eleven on eleven. So like him, he didn't build the game, obviously, but his impact of creating, uh, being a part of the creation of that franchise and the explosion of video games and the exposure that non-sports people get to football." through the video game, I think that he has had the largest impact of spreading uh, 
a, a it, creation of love for for football than anybody else in history. It's it's akin to modern day fantasy football. What that's done for the NFL yeah. in in bringing up another generation. It, it certainly did that. And my foot into uh, John Madden was was feet was athletes foot. Boom. Oh, so yeah. fact, it's an acton. I mean, I, that's something. When you I posted yeah. that this morning, when you've yes. got like a. An, an advertisement for a product that will literally last until the day is that I die. Is even still around? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But boom. Yeah. I mean, that, that it was his, classic. His coaching record was 103, yes. 32, and 7. 103, 32, and 7. That's ridiculous. He was one of the greatest coaches of all time, greatest announcers of all time. I think a lot of the reason why we think everybody sucks that announces games <laughs> today is because of John Madden. And if you've had the opportunity, like when Norm Macdonald passed, you know, we, we ended up around the studio, like watching videos. Yep. When John Madden passed, you go watch the turducken explanation where he talks about on, on Thanksgiving day, he literally breaks a turducken open with his hands on live and then go watch him talk about the buckets giving birth. Dude, to I was going to say the, the bucket, the, the bucket clip is so <laughs> ridiculous because it's awesome. You, it, while he is doing it, you're like, I can't tell if he is like serious right now or if this is like a a master class of just dry humor. But it is, oh, it's such a a funny story of the mom and the dad water cooler <laughs> giving birth. It was to so a funny. New water so cooler. Funny. Oh, fabulous. Um. So yeah, Jason. Myself, not as good at Madden as Mike, that's for sure. Twitter, Tiffany wants to know Rashad Penny against Detroit or Daryl Williams at Cincinnati. Oh, man. Um, this one is – this one's Rashad Penny to me. Really? It is to me, too. Yeah, very – very, pretty strongly. I, I Rashad Penny is, is getting every opportunity, and Detroit gives you every opportunity. So I'm going to go there. Yeah, right. Rashad Penny has been – I think Derek awesome. Gore is going to get work. Derek Gore is okay. going to have a, a lot of work, and I think Rashad Penny is going to have all of it. Yeah, his his uh, usage over the the last couple games, uh, you know, when the opportunity was starting to come to him, sixty four percent of the running back attempts against Houston has the the down game against the Rams, but then that skyrockets to eighty one percent against Chicago, and he looks great. A hun over one hundred thirty rushing yards in two of the past three games. As long as he can stay healthy, I don't blame you guys at all for going with Rashad Penny here. Oh my gosh, I I feel like the touchdown upside and opportunity is for Daryl, but it may not be with Penny in that in that matchup. Jay, you're you're strongly for Rashad. Yeah, I mean, I I I almost made Rashad Penny my start of the week um, because I think he's just a smash play, and you got to start him. My worry with him is. Simply, and this is this is unfair. Um, it's not good analysis. It's just literally like you holding the rabbit's foot. Um, worry of every time that you, we've relied on him in the past, he's gotten injured. Um, and Penny. so yeah, yeah, so it's just a worry of man. If if I not last week, sure, no, no, absolutely. I mean, so Curtis Patrick um tweeted this out. Uh, Rashad Penny when he has twelve plus carries in a game, twelve for one hundred six and one. 14 for 129 and 1, 15 for 74 and 1, 16 for 137 and 2, 17 for 135 and 1. He's a good yes. player, and he's getting 12-plus carries in this game, and I think he's going to dominate. Uh, is, stay healthy, my friend. I mean, He's going to win championships yeah. this week. Um, here is a psychology question from, from Brayton that came in this morning. Uh, would you rather lose by a fraction of a point or get completely blown out of the water? <laughs> yeah, I would rather get blown out of the water. I would. I I want the band aid ripped off. Uh, so long as uh, stat correction has already gone through, and I, I, I want to be the fraction of a point uh, on on Monday night, so that I still have a chance to win. But um, emotionally, I would rather just go. Oh yeah, I'm. It's it's over. I, it's Mike. Mike, you've got to do all of these. Yeah. This this year, uh, so which which was worse? Uh man, in the 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 ending outcome. So if this is strictly an emotional thing, then then you got to go getting blown out of the water. But for for fantasy football, for the enjoyment of the weekend, it has to me. It has to be the fraction of the point. The end result very very painful. But when you lose, 
um, like when you lose a matchup on a Thursday night, like, like because the your opponent's quarterback, they they've got a quarterback wide receiver stack. They go out, they put up just points that your team cannot overcome. Like that's not very fun. I, I want to be able to watch all the games at least through the afternoon slate on Sunday and still be in it, have the weekend instead of just it, it being over right away. So I'll take the fraction. It's more painful, but I'll take the fraction. Yeah, I mean, the more pain is also just more emotion. You cared more yeah. because it was more fun until it sucked. So I get that side of it. Where do you stand, Andy? Yeah, but you, I mean, more emotion. You, you punch the wall harder. There's more damage <laughs> to your house. No, there's not damage. My house is way cleaner. I think, <laughs> I, I think if you, yeah, maybe this is stupid, but if, if you lose by a fraction of the point, is it worse if you scored very few points or a lot of points? Because I mean, okay. we do that game. Getting the, we do that game where the, you're the like cheap win or yeah, the the they actually the opponent took it away from you. Uh, it just feels like you you like if you if you score a lot of points and don't get the win, that's the worst possible outcome because you you believe you compare yourself. First thing you do is go look mm -hmm. at the high yep. scores on the week. <laughs> I outscored then, everybody, but out, I lost. You go out and you tell everybody you should have won, and you count it in your head as a should have won. And yeah, that's worse. Yeah, that that is definitely worse. It's better for fantasy football because you've got more points scored for playoff tiebreakers, but just worse emotionally. Just that's that's you know when when I when I lose by a fraction of a point, but I put up sixty two points, I'm like, I did not deserve the win. I am that's I true. am fine with that's the true. loss. Um, but to be clear, if you win with like sixty two points, that was a lot of skill. That oh week. yeah, my um, great defense wins a win. Two flex questions here for week seventeen. First, we'll go with Sean's question here. Cordero Patterson or Jalen Waddle in the flex? Jalen Waddle. Yeah, Waddle, especially if it's full yeah, I, PPR. And then I think this one's easy too, but Will wants to know Tyler Lockett or Justin Fields in a super flex. It, that has yeah, to be Fields. Yeah, it's got to be Fields. Yeah, I would take Fields. I, I mean, it's, you, you have to go with the quarterback, and you can't play the game of hindsight where Tyler Lockett against Detroit, it could be one of those 120-2 and two games for him because it matches up. But you got to take the sure, the more sure points of the quarterback. They are much more assured. I mean, you look back; it's not that he can't. Justin Fields can't throw up a turd, you know, against Baltimore, um, put up three point five points, but he got injured. He only played right. half the game. Who knows how that would have been? But eighteen point nine points last week, twenty two point four points, twenty points before the injury game, twenty seven points. They, yeah, you've got to take those known quarterback points. All right, Twitter question. Antonio Gibson or Devin Singletary in a PPR league? Oh, my goodness. I know. Oh, my goodness. I'll Don't worry. A championship's riding on this decision, I, Mike. I will hop in first here um, <laughs> because I have stared down the barrel at this question, and I chose to put Singletary one spot ahead of Antonio Gibson. Uh, I did that because I asked myself the question looking at the research – if I had these guys on my team, which one am I going to rely on? And the opportunity, the usage, the shift to Devin Singletary has been real. The matchup against Atlanta is great. He's not injured. He's been involved. He's scoring touchdowns. So I, I'm going to go Singletary here. Both of them laying out the risks. It's the, we We have, you know, three games in a row, essentially, where Singletary was – getting a huge opportunity share, and he's come through. But the risk is if it feels like you are, you're you playing don't break the ice right now with Singletary, and at any moment they're like, nope, Zach Moss, he's going to – Zach Moss got a goal line carry last week. Right. You're like at any moment, we're, we're back to 50-50. Maybe Matt Burita is, is active and we're going to give him some carries. But Gibson is – the matchup is terrible. You could see it uh, – uh, on the field that he is not a hundred percent with that toe. I know he, he came through with the touchdown, but it turned into the blowout. They put Jared Patterson in. Oh, I would go. I'll I think take, it's, it's single. I'll take the matchup me. in Singletary here. All right. Josh price, longtime uh, listener of the show wants to know when our Christmas trees and decorations actually come <laughs> down when they come down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So I've got, I've got, uh, I guess I can announce this to the world. I just shared this with uh, a few people. Where you're sharing your plan? Yeah, internally. But um, I have ordered. So I have. Are you, 
Are you doing it? I am doing it. I have two. I have two <laughs> large Christmas trees decorated in my house, and it takes us hours, which really means days do. to decorate it. Um, and I have ordered shrink wrap because my plan. <laughs> I'm gonna try these. <laughs> these Christmas trees are actually they're on a base that has wheels, so I am going to try to shrink wrap all the decorations on the tree. And wheel them into my garage so that they're already set up. And next year I could just voila and have a tree. I can't. To be a fly on the wall watching you climb a ladder to shrink wrap these trees. It's going to be very funny. Is going to be. I, well, we'll, we'll let Al tell you how it goes. I'll make him uh, help Oh, me. my It's goodness. not going to work. <laughs> You've well, you got nothing to do Then you, you, then you do failed. Weekend, right? then, just so you know, if it's not going to work, that means you <laughs> failed at doing it, at accomplishing that goal. Great job, Al. Somebody saw through the re the fact that we said we'd fire Al, and then they're like, "How can you fire Al? You can't do anything." <laughs> That's true. You need Al to be. Isn't Al the person Jason called when he was afraid of a spider on his dad? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. My decoration. Job security. Uh, the the in house decorations. I mean, usually a week or so after Christmas, we're we're getting after it. Now the tree. I've had a, look, fellas. I've had a Valentine's Day tree. I've had a Saint. Oh no! I've had a Saint Patrick's Day tree. <laughs> no, you I've have been there. not. I've been there. I've had an Easter tree. <laughs> oh, no, you oh, have oh, not. Oh. It, You've had an Easter. tree? It happens, man. Sometimes, sometimes. Have you have you ever had a Halloween tree? <laughs> no. Okay, so uh, you've not made it the full year. I've also I've never had a Fourth of July tree. Okay. Okay, that's, that's uh, I was going to ask. We have that. limits. But I mean a a. a an Easter tree, you <laughs> must have actual dust on the tree at that point. Oh, of course. The, the ornaments must have dust on top of them if you are. There's new ornaments. I assume Easter. you put Easter eggs all yeah, over yeah, the Yeah, yeah, we swap them out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at that many that many days goes by, it, do you even see the tree? I mean, the tree is just like. That's kind of what happens. Is You, you just forget that it's there. It's now, it, it, it's it, morphs, house it morphs into the background of it's just there. It's just a house plant. Yep. Yeah, why don't we have like unornamented, full size, <laughs> fake pine trees, trees that are lit? Fake pine trees in your house. Um, well, some of us do. No, did. Some, yeah, some of us do. All right, we have uh, Gerald Everett or Hunter Henry from YouTube, week seventeen. Ooh, uh, I will say this: Gerald Everett has a fantastic matchup. You look at our uh, stream finder tool when you're looking for a good stream at the tight end position. And he's been involved. He's scoring touchdowns. He had one this last week. Um, what about the fact that he's Gerald Everett? I think Gerald Everett is a fine player and a fine athlete. I don't like how they use him in this offense, that it's very short. Um, it's, you know, close to the line of scrimmage. He doesn't go deep down the field. Is for that the most because part. he's costing you $100 every week when. <laughs> they don't throw it to Will Disley. Um, I would say Jimmy Graham is costing me a hundred dollars, <laughs> but um, Disley's back, baby. Yeah, come on, <laughs> come on, give me some money back. That's a man who might as well prepay me the next hundred. Yeah, I mean, really, I th when I say I'm no coward and that I will take the bet, I know what I'm doing. I'm giving you a hundred dollars. <laughs> I am well aware. <laughs> I don't have any uh, false oh, hope anymore. Um, um, I would. I'd probably play Everett. The, the floor for Hunter Henry is zero points or like Yeah, one. it doesn't seem like it's zero for Everett anymore. Right. The last two weeks, though, Hunter Henry's been eight targets, six targets. Ooh. Yeah. I That's a know. really, really hard decision. Um, I'm going to play How many touchdowns Everett. on the year for Hunter Henry? Nine. Nine? Yep. So let's say you're fifty fifty on a touchdown to Henry, and if if Henry scores a touchdown, he's probably outperforming Everett, right? Probably. So, oh, what do you need, right? I mean, what do you need from that position? Are you a favorite? Are you an underdog? I mean, Everett is less likely to give. I mean, Henry can give you two touchdowns. Yeah. So if you're an underdog, I might lean Henry. Yeah, it's it's very tough. Like since since the bye week where the, the transition seems to have really happened. I mean, it just stands out on the box score. Everett has been right. solid as a fantasy tight end. All right, one more question from Will. How tall are you? 
We see you sitting down. Mm. We don't know how tall you are. Al and the judge, too. This is a great <laughs> question because every single time that we ever meet someone in public, the first thing out of their mouth is, oh, you guys are so tall. And when they say you guys, they're speaking to Andy and Mike. <laughs> um, I am 5'11", and I never made it to the you six almost, foot. You almost made it. I know. It's a real shame. Uh, I no, Mike and I are both uh, over the six foot mark. Yeah. I'm a little over six two. I'm a little under six one. All right. And Jeremy is uh, five, five eight, five five, eight? five four, five two, five three. Jason and I, are, uh, Jason and I are the same height. No, we are not. No. <laughs> how how we tall are is not. Danny? De how tall is Danny DeVito? <laughs> oh, that's a good. That's a good question. Um, how? According tall? to Jason, five eleven. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> how tall are you? Uh, how? I'm 5'9". And uh, okay. the judge? Uh, probably 5'8". Oh, Pretty short guy. Wow. Yeah, also, lose. Danny DeVito is 4'10". Wow. I did not realize. Yeah, he's, he's a shorter fella. I, this yeah. explains why I can never see Brooks over the monitors. I can never see his face. Yes. Because he's, he's as short as he is rich. <laughs> he's very short. <laughs> Brutal. All right, we've got starts of the week. The Boom Boom Kicker continues. All of the matchups. Championship week is here. We'll catch you up on news and do all of that on tomorrow's episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Thank you so much for tuning in, listening, subscribing, supporting, reviewing, and good luck in week 17. It's going to be a fun one. Absolutely, Foot Clan. Do not forget Spotify Green Room. The party room is happening tonight at 6 Eastern. We will see you there. Goodbye. Kill! Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.